Oh God! What did Rudy Giuliani do this oh, time? Oh my God! Uh -huh. You can't, you almost don't want to know, but uh, we're going to tell you anyway. Yeah. So it's <laughs> been a real hell of a week for the man previously known as America's mayor and currently known as the guy who leaks brown goo out of his skull and doesn't know the difference between the Four Seasons Hotel and the Four Seasons Landscaping Company. We already went over this year's third Donald Trump indictment and how Rudy Giuliani, despite not being indicted himself yet, mm -hmm. is featured throughout the indictment as its number one co-conspirator. But that, of course, was not the only Rudy news this week. Check the indictment. Am I number one? Cool. Great. <laughs> Everything's coming up, Rudy. It's making me horny. <laughs> <laughs> Get over here, big tits. Uh, so yeah, back in May, Rudy was sued by a former staffer named Nicole Dunphy, who accused him of habitual sexual harassment and assault, wage theft, constant drunkenness, and offering to sell presidential pardons for $2 million a pop. And we're not going to rehash all of the exact details because they are um, a bit disturbing. But you can watch our original coverage of that on the uh, pop-up link on the screen now. Uh, or you can just go watch the Borat sequel. Because the part where he appears to start taking off his pants while alone with a fake reporter lines up pretty well with the kind of stuff he's alleged to have put Noel Dunphy through. What did Borat know and when did he know it? Uh, quickly enough to run in there and stop the filming process. <laughs> Thank God he did. Yeah. Lord knows what would have happened. But yeah, on top of everything that came out with the initial lawsuit, there is, unfortunately, much more. Mm -hmm. And here's Rolling Stone with a little background. Rudy Giuliani was sued for sexual harassment earlier this year by Noel Dunphy, a former staffer at his firm. The lawsuit included a wide array of disturbing allegations against the Trump-loving lawyer. From behaving erratically while drunk, to exposing himself non-consensually, to demanding sexual favors, to making various sexist and racist remarks. Giuliani denied everything, smearing Dunphy and asking the court to strike portions of the lawsuit and sanction her and her lawyer. Dunphy and her lawyer responded on Monday by asking for Giuliani and his lawyer to be sanctioned. They included audio transcripts of Giuliani saying exactly the kind of things he denied saying. And folks, it's not great. The transcripts include a host of truly vile, bigoted remarks, as well as some of the creepiest come-ons the mind can imagine. He's had decades to perfect those come-ons, and uh, boy has he. Oh, baby. Uh, let's just go straight to the source for these, starting with the one that's most seared into the brains of everyone who reads it. Uh, so I'll be Mr. Giuliani, I you, guess. You can take this one, uh, please. <laughs> yeah, God. It lines up with the script, so uh, yeah, I am, I am the one who is cursed. Uh, here's, here we go. Come here, big tits. Come here, big tits. Your tits belong to me. Give them to me. <laughs> I want to claim my tits. I want to claim my tits. These are my tits. Oh, yeah. These breasts belong to me. Nobody else can get near these, okay? I don't care if they're flirting or they give you business cards. <laughs> these are mine. You got it? Yes. Understand? I'm very fucking possessive. I've gone easy on you. Uh, I don't know. I've been easy on you. You're pretty tough on me. I've been easy on you. Give them to me. Maybe. I love that we're, this is the one time we're actually filming our show during regular uh, business hours at yes. this uh, office complex we have a studio yeah, at. Even man, my alarm's going off for the uh, morning. Generally, we have the luxury of... Uh, having an empty building. Yes, uh, so saying I, things out loud here with uh, presumably other businesses going on. We are at the end of the hall, but very fun. Uh, we'll see if the complaint shows up in our email. Anyway. <laughs> um, Guys, uh, we heard some really strange, unsettling noises coming <laughs> out of, what do you do again? <laughs> so yeah, ugh, that Rudy, very gross. those quotes, uh, pretty weird. Mm -hmm. And this, along with everything else we're about to read, is supposedly based on audio recordings that Noel, Nicole, Noel Dunphy uh, took while working for Giuliani. And, you know, knowing how these things go, it's probably only a matter of time until the raw audio mm -hmm. ends up getting leaked somewhere and further traumatizing all of us. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, though, it's not all just outright horniness from 
horny old Rudy, but uh, this next one is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it also further demonstrates a point from the original complaint, namely that one of Rudy's dirty talk tactics was a little bit of father-daughter incest roleplay. So here you go, and I guess I'll be Rudy this time. Yes, let's uh, trade it. Let's balance. Yeah. And apologies in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we go right ahead, wherever, on the floor of the living room. As soon as we get in, we don't even make it to the bedroom. Yes. All the clothes come off. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Let the doorman wait outside to bring in the luggage. Wait. Wait. We need a little time alone. Yeah, I need a little time alone with my girlfriend here. That's right. With my daughter. That's right. With my little girl. Good lord. Uh, And yeah, it does, based on the transcript and based on all the various photos of these two together, sound like she was a willing participant for at least part of this, which could be a problem for this lawsuit. But that doesn't mean harassment and assault didn't happen. He was her employer, after all. It also doesn't disprove the other allegations. And these audio transcripts seem to mainly be a response to Rudy's claim that this lawsuit has no basis in reality. If nothing else... Jung Jung. The court of internet today finds Rudy Giuliani guilty on all counts of being a creepy old man. And he is going bonk straight to horny jail. Bonk, bonk, bonk. And uh, also, (laughs) you love to see an old man doing uh, role play, getting into the kinks. I mean, he literally married his cousin. So this is not just a kink. Uh-huh. There is some basis in reality, but it, it's it's weird that like uh, he's playing not not just obviously not just the father daughter scenario, but bringing other characters into the mix. The doorman, the, yeah. the the entire escapade is all exactly the way. And Borat's in the closet. He's he's ready to pop out. At he's a in there. Notice. Sasha Baron Cohen is jerking off because what we're doing is so hot. He doesn't want to ruin it. Uh, anyway, there's a camera there. There's uh, a camera there. I mean. There might be cameras. Uh, yeah, th- this would be the most horrific thing to come out of this lawsuit is video footage. People were referring to this as the Giuliani sex tape because I guess it, it's audio tapes of mm-hmm. him talking about having sex. And just the even the, the remote possibility of that entering my mind was nearly blinded me. It won't be long before it's keeping up with the Giulianis on your favorite TV network. Ugh. Do you think he leaks brown goo out of not just his head? I was trying to make that reference the other day, and it just didn't <laughs> land, but I'm glad that you could put it out there for everyone uh, as forcefully as possible. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, uh, it's, it's chocolate cream pie. Anyway. Oh! <laughs> uh, Claire. Oh, fucking Christ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, the new transcripts are not just Rudy Giuliani doing his best Pepe Le Pew impression. Mm-hmm. There's also some interesting sound bites of Rudy talking about the Jews, which is always good. Always good when the Jews come up in conversation. Yeah, especially when they're referred Uh, to in such a way. The Jews. Yeah. So, quote, Jews, they want to go through that freaking Passover all the time. Man, oh man. Get over the Passover. It was like 3,000 years ago. Okay, the Red Sea parted. Big deal. Not the first time that happened. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) What? (laughs) Uh, And then there's this. The way, the way natural selection works, Jewish men have small cocks because they can't use them after they get married. Whereas the Italian men use them all of their lives, so they get bigger. <laughs> so, I mean, look, at the very least, at a time when we are seeing anti-Semitic tropes from the 1930s making a big comeback, it's at least somewhat refreshing that Rudy's coming up with his own brand new tropes. <laughs> Rudy Giuliani, the least racist anti-Semite. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I'm pretty sure this is deeply anti-Semitic, yeah. but it's just so far out of left field that... Oh, big deal, the Red Sea. I could go see that it parted right now if I wanted to. It used to part all the time. Yeah. Oh, celebrate something else. Anyways, finally, there's one more transcript, and it's an even bigger non sequitur than the stuff about the Jews. It's also where we're going to have to do a little bit of bleeping, because there is a homophobic slur in there. Um, which one is the slur? I'll let you have that one. I'll take the slur, I yeah, guess. Yeah, all right. Uh, I'll be Dunphy. Okay. Who are the other Republicans who are celebrities? Ain't too many. Brad, not Brad Pitt, the other one that looks like him. Bradley Cooper? No, the other one. What the hell's his name? Well, Matt Damon is very liberal. No, Matt Damon is, Matt Damon is a, <laughs> Matt Damon is also five foot two, eyes are blue. Coochie, 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 coo. Maybe. <laughs> Gucci, what? <laughs> Gucci, 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 Gucci. 
Okay, so yeah, what the fuck? Uh, I mean, a lot to unpack in just a few sentences. Matt Damon is widely listed as having a height of five foot ten, which is actually taller than Rudy Giuliani. No, he, Rudy I, has those clown shoes on, and he, he gets a couple extra inches. That would mean his real height is even lower than that. Um, <laughs> but Italian men, their cocks never stop growing, but the rest of them it, it, start shrinking it down. It weighs down the rest and, of their And body. therefore, it, yeah. it starts looking even bigger. Sweetheart, you, you, the old Italian men, that's where you want to be. The ratio. <sighs> But yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I've never met Matt Damon. He, I guess it could be some Hollywood trickery. You know, yeah. they're all slightly smaller than you think they are. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, yeah, what was that Coochie Coo stuff? It, it appears that Giuliani was quoting a song called "Has Anybody Seen My Girl?" Five foot two, <laughs> eyes of blue. That was originally released circa 1925. Wow. It's actually old enough that it is past the public domain cutoff, so we can play you some of it without violating copyright. Five foot two, eyes of blue. But oh, what those five foot could do? Has anybody seen my gal? So yeah, we're left to assume that this is the kind of uh, flapper music that is. It's that's what Rudy puts on when he's puts on the old gramophone when he's getting the vapors after popping a oh, Benny. Oh, oh, 23 skidoo! <laughs> Imagine it. He's not even that old. He's like 79. Like, why are you listening to music from like Prohibition? He's just and quoting it left and right. Quoting it to a woman half his age, like as if she would ever know what the fuck he's referencing. He wants to embrace the full aging New York Italian lifestyle. I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. Whew. Uh, yeah, anyways, that's enough Rudy Giuliani for now. I Please. think we've all heard enough. We can uh, You can pause the video, take a shower, yeah. come back. Here we go. Yeah, the, the woman was seemingly recording everything, so that's probably, uh, there's going to be more where all that came from, unfortunately. But let's switch gears to something much more enjoyable. This week, the internet was treated to not only some of the best slapstick comedy ever seen, but also a mystery that spawned from it. It starts with a clip shared to Twitter by the news outlet Live Boston with the caption, Boston, Massachusetts. A Boston police officer sustained a head injury after a mishap at a playground on Congress Street downtown. Boston EMS treated the officer. Huh, hmm. Well, let's just see that clip. (laughs) Why was it so... Wait. Wait, hold on. Let's play it back again. Okay. Oh, fuck. Why was it so? Nope. Sorry. I'm gonna one more okay. time. Let, let's, uh... let's, let's let's slow it down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that cop got absolutely chewed up and spit out by that children's playground slide. Mm -hmm. It flipped him onto his stomach, smacked him in the balls, and fired him out like a cannon with enough force that one of his pistol mags came loose and was just sort of scattered on the ground. Yeah. I guess it could have gone a lot worse considering the pistol itself was strapped to his body during this whole ordeal. Yeah. But uh, thankfully, the physical and emotional wounds here were non-life-threatening. But, okay, what the hell just happened? This is a slide for children. If it did that to an adult cop, is it launching little kids all the way across town? We don't know. <laughs> Wee! What are the physics of what we just saw? Um, it was really something. Well, thanks to the slide being located in downtown Boston, a lot of people decided to go check it out for themselves. I gotta see the cop spitting slide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The slide's uh, famous now. <laughs> for starters, in the original video, it's clear that this is a big slide, but we're looking at it from another angle, uh, and, and you can see a, a better sense of its actual size from this angle here. That is a long way down. Yeah. And with that amount of distance, someone weighing 200 pounds is definitely going to gain a lot more momentum than a 50-pound kid. You should really put up signs letting people know that this slide is not for adults. Yeah, where's the signs? No matter how tempting it is when you drive past your in your automobile on the way to your soulless job and you see this beautiful, tall slide just gazing at you from the side. Beckoning. You cannot stop and use it. It's for children only. So where the hell's the sign? Put up a sign. 
Clearly, this thing's dangerous. Yeah. Oh, oh, actually, they did. And it was multiple signs. Oh. And the cop just ignored them. What? Because he is above the law, clearly. A cop ignoring <laughs> clearly posted warnings? Thinking that they are above the law and also above the laws of physics? That, Say it ain't so. That can't stop me. I have qualified immunity. Yeah. So, uh, so much for that thin blue line, folks. Thin blue line has been breached. It should have been a thin blue streak all the way down the slide. That cop said ACAB. All cops are bullets. And yeah. shut Thump. that cop out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess it's settled then. The slide is safe for kids, but any adult who uses it will get the shit beaten out of them and be launched 10 feet. Except no! Multiple other adults decided to bravely try the slide out themselves and post first-person videos of their experiments. Mythbusters! And aside from being slightly cramped inside due to it being designed for children, they all came out unscathed, and their journeys down the slide were pretty unremarkable. It's a slide. Mm -hmm. So I guess the mystery They deepens. all had a lot of fun, though. The mystery deepens. It, uh, my favorite part about this slide is it's like a water slide. It's got a top on it. You know, most kids' slides, open-topped. This one, it's like, it's a mystery. Observing from the outside, it's a complete mystery. Well, that's so you don't what fly happens. off the side, uh, or uh, yes, off the top. Yes. Yeah. But it is a mystery what goes on in there. Yeah, it could be anything. You go in, something happens, and then it kicks you in the balls and throws you on the ground <laughs> yeah. and disarms you. Don't go down the slide. <laughs> the cop comes out. Don't go. You're not going to want to go down. I've seen things. So, uh, yeah. The Rudy Giuliani's in there. Uh, we have no explanation yet for yeah. why this happened to this I've cop. got theories. Also, I, I still have seen no explanation for why someone was filming. And whoever was filming was having a great time. They're giggling the whole time. So, like, was this... This cop is about to do something stupid. Cops do love showing up to, like, playgrounds and, um... Hey, let's shoot some b-ball! Like, in a way where they're kind of intimidating people who literally can't say no. So the cop's like, hey, I'm gonna play some basketball with you. And you're like, I guess this hey, cop is playing basketball with me. Give me that skateboard, uh, I'll try a kickflip. Yeah. So, and they always end up on, like, Instagram. It's, like, heartwarming. This cop, uh... uh took is, five minutes away from killing people to, uh... <laughs> yeah. Sink a basket. Uh, so I, I think that might have been what was going on here. <laughs> but who knows? Yeah. My, no more stop and frisk. This cop does stop and free throw. He's a cool cop. This cop is so cool. He beat five people on the way home to beating his wife. Well, he would have beaten ten if he didn't stop to shoot a little basketball. Thank you for that public park. You're doing a great service. So, yeah. How did this one Boston cop manage to get going so fast and so out of control on this damn slide? which is for children. Again, children's slide. Well, HuffPost uh, decided to consult some experts in their report. I just want to get my theory out before I haven't read this. And this is my theory, okay? Okay. I've been holding this in all week. Because of his gear, mm -hmm. it creates less of a drag on the slide where the friction would usually That's take place. Okay, shut up. No! Shut the fuck Did up. Did I get... I'm an expert you now. You spoiled the episode. Just read the fucking thing. No, but I, that's, I didn't read this before. That's my theory. Okay, you're a scientist. Read the fucking thing. Okay, scientist <laughs> Ricky has to consult some other scientists now from the Huffington Post. The video opens with a cacophony of bangs and bonks as the unseen officer loses a great battle. Suddenly, he toboggans into frame, turtle style, legs first, face down, whipping along the outer rim of the slide before he spills from its wide metal maw onto the ground. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Great writing. After the clip of a Boston police officer catapulting out of a children's slide at the recently renovated City Hall Plaza playground went viral, many wondered how the officer reached such an alarming speed. The officer sustained and recovered from a minor head injury. Head of his penis. <laughs> and is he fully recovered? Uh, Boston Mayor Michelle Wu promised to make sure there's more signage that this is for children or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I've never had to deal with an idiot yeah. cop hurting himself on our playgrounds before. Uh, out of a shared concern for playground safety, HuffPost asked a physicist why the officer was going so fast and how others could avoid his misadventures. Normal people, when they go down a slide, they're fine, said <laughs> <laughs> Rhett Allen, an associate professor of physics at Southeastern Louisiana University and the author of The Physics of Going Fast, But Not Too Fast on a Giant Slide <laughs> for Wired. What? Slide expert. I would guess it has something to, about the clothes he's wearing. This is my theory. Yeah. And, and it's apparently not You can theory. go down to Louisiana and steal this man's job now. No, you arrived at his same theory independently. I've gone down a lot of slides in my time, and I know what makes them work. Yeah. 
the the way we used to do it when I was a boy was we would go and steal. I think the uh, statutes and limitations are done now. We would steal trays from McDonald's or Burger King. Yeah, yeah. And then go down on the tray yeah. because there's no friction. Yeah. And you go zoom. So this guy had plastic and metal and other shit all over yeah. him, and it 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 lubricated him essentially. Probably some gun oil. You got the gun head. oil everywhere. It could have uh, gone a lot worse. Hog sweat lubricating the he, slide. He, I'm surprised he didn't shoot the slide afterwards. I know that slide attacked an officer. Well, he might have like as soon as like it first uh, jerked him around a little bit, he pulled out his baton and started beating the slide. But yeah. that just propelled him further. Yes. And then you know he's he's all full of donuts, so he farts and it's just like, boom. and he's uh, yeah, that's that's probably what happened. Yeah, they love Duncan. I wish he would have said like said some words afterwards in a beautiful, uh, just romantic Boston accent. Hey man, what the heck? Hey, what the fuck? Hey, what the fuck? The fucking slide just spat me out. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and my car is parked all the way over on Harvard Yard. I thought this thing was for kids. Uh, so yeah, it turns out wait. <laughs> And size have nothing to do with speed mm -hmm. in this case because it's it's gravity that sends you down a slide and mm -hmm. objects fall at the same speed regardless of how big or small they are. The only possible factor is friction. Back to the article. Friction depends on the two surfaces interacting. So if you have a metal slide and it's in contact with skin or cotton clothes, you have a certain coefficient of friction, Alain said. And if you change the material, maybe to something stiff, could make it a lot slipperier. If the officer gave himself a little push at the top of the slide, <laughs> he added, it could contribute, but not altogether explain his velocity. The video shows the officer dressed in a neon vest and a typical officer's uniform. A slight sheen on the pants suggests the fabric is synthetic or tightly woven and slippery. Yeah, because they need to be moving whenever they're chasing down and, uh, yeah, yeah, a shoplifter and if to a, murder them. if a crook tries to put their hands on the cop. Yeah, Whoop, butterfingers. Oh, gosh. See, that's one theory from an expert on these things and uh, the big brain over here. But we still can't wrap our heads around how cop clothes could cause such a crash. So let's just uh, play that back one more time. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, I mean, I, I, let's, for, for fun, let's keep it in the unsolved folder. Uh, you know, we're dealing with a lot of like UFOs and shit recently. Yeah. Those, uh, those aren't fun anymore. Now that everyone's involved, uh, we have the cop cannon, and uh, we really need to be investing in the research of, of how we can perfect this to shoot shoot cops out of the country. <laughs> Thunk. Bye bye. I'm gonna edit that so it just says shoot cops. <laughs> Please don't. I won't. <laughs> oh God. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, this is the new UAP, a unexplained anomalous phenomena. and hopefully someone from the CIA comes out in a few decades and tells Congress the truth. Because the truth is out there somewhere. The cops like, there was like, I spent like 30 years in that slide. What the hell? Whoa. I'm right back here at the moment, right after I got on the slide, but I've lived a whole lifetime inside of the slide. What I the heck? I started sliding and I was a little kid. <laughs> I, obviously, I read the signs that said kids only. <laughs> I, I was a little kid and I came out and not only was I 40 years old. Fully but I, uniformed Boston but Police I, Department I was officer. a police officer. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> moving on now to an update on a main character that first landed on our radar just a few months back, but really stole the show. Uh, another character whose crimes are not fun, but no. made himself into a character that is easy to laugh at. Uh, so the background on why exactly real British gentleman Arthur Knight ended up in the news, it's not, it's not good. It's very unsavory, but basically he's been in, in an ongoing legal battle with the British government over whether he is who he says he is, or is in fact not a disabled British gentleman at all. And it's in fact an American named Nicholas Rossi, aka Nicholas Aliverdian, who faked his death to avoid prosecution for sex crimes and assumed a new identity in the UK. And just to refresh your memory, here you go. We were once a normal family, but thanks to the media, our lives have been interrupted. And we'd like privacy, and I would like to go back to being a normal husband. But I'm, I can't, because I can't breathe, I can't walk. Uh, people say that's an act. Let me try to stand up. Let me try to stand up. Exactly. Exactly. 
What do you say to to someone who believes that that you are Nicholas Oliverdian? I am not Andrea. I am not Nicholas Oliverdian. I do not know how to make this clear. What do you say to people who say these are crocodile tears? He's putting on a show. This is all an act. <laughs> Oh, you Andrea, no, that's, that's a low blow. That's a right low blow. Yeah, something, uh, something definitely strange going on. Yeah, there. something is off here. Mm-hmm. Anyways, here's the latest from the Daily Beast. A rape suspect accused of faking his own death to evade American authorities on a series of sex charges can be extradited to the U.S., a Scottish court ruled Wednesday. Nicholas Rossi, 35, claims in a bizarre story that he was detained in the UK in 2021 in a case of mistaken identity and that he's actually an Irish orphan named Arthur Knight. A separate Scottish court ruling in November dismissed his story after his tattoos and fingerprints were found to match records held by the UK's National Crime Agency. Sheriff Norman McFadden, a local judge in Edinburgh, ruled that Rossi could be legally extradited to the US but that the ultimate decision now rests with Scottish ministers. The ruling could be the end of a baffling series of hearings in Scotland lasting over 18 months in which Rossi has pushed his narrative of an innocent man being made the victim of an international conspiracy. Rossi was arrested in December 2021 as he was receiving treatment for COVID in a Glasgow hospital. At his identification hearing last year, he claimed he had been tattooed while unconscious in the hospital in an effort to make him look like Rossi, who had been the subject of an Interpol red notice. He also claimed his fingerprints had been tampered with. It's crazy how that happens. These Scottish ministers... uh, uh, Actually, I don't know. (sighs) God. He does tell, he spins quite a yawn, doesn't he? (laughs) I don't know who to believe. It's a tale as good as Dickens. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's more fun to believe the conspiracy, I guess. Uh, it's a lot more I fun. I think they should prob- probably extradite him as soon you, as possible. You take away all this shit, and it's just a series of horrific crimes. Yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so it looks like this guy is finally getting sent back to the U.S., thus putting an end to an extremely bizarre legal saga in the U.K. And the biggest question is, of course, is he going to keep playing this Arthur Knight character? Uh, He kept up the act long after the UK legal system had him pretty much dead to rights with proof that he wasn't who he was claiming to be. So is he going to continue sticking to his story even after being extradited? At this point, he's dug his hole way too deep. If he admits that, yeah, he faked his death and assumed his ridiculous new identity, but only because he's an innocent man, it's not going to play really well in the US courts. So he's kind of just got to keep being Arthur Knight British gentleman. I think maybe maybe he's like, okay, okay, I admit it. I'm not Arthur Knight. I'm Arthur Robichaux. I'm from Louisiana. I'm an old-timey Louisiana gentleman from from Ooh. French stock, Huguenot stock. Uh, you and, don't uh, know how hot it gets down in the bayou. I was taken by the vapors, and next thing you know, officer, I am in this courtroom. I had too many hand grenades and hurricanes. <laughs> <laughs> and daiquiris, and I ended up on a flight to the United Kingdom with a, and and you know here I am, I gotta play the part. Yep. And what a part it was. But I'm back home now, and Arthur Robichaux is, is who I am. Say, I don't know who this Nicholas Rossi is, but this is some highfalutin, <laughs> highfalutin crimes you're accusing me the of. The sooner I get back on a riverboat, the better. So if you guys <laughs> could hurry this up, Still I got, got a mojito waiting. Got a mojito waiting for me. <laughs> Oh, my stars. Well, you you gentlemen have fun f- solving your little mysteries. Uh, I, you know, despite all the horrific news we have today, at least we could do every accent from every region that, that we have butchered over the years. Uh, is there an Australian story coming up? Because that would really round things no, up. No, no Australians. God! Flor- a lot of Floridians, though. So. Oh, the Florida accent. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm I'm from Florida. This is I'm how the, I talk. I'm the Florida governor. Who do 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 do? Florida accent, where you sound just like a whiny fucking. Oh ha 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 ha! All right, let's go talk to everyone else. Did you see that video this week? Yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> anyway, uh... all right, let's go make the rounds. Uh... But before we get to that fun Florida stuff, yeah, uh, in the headlines app, it is time to let you know once again. This episode is sponsored by AG1, AG1. the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. We both drink AG1 first thing every morning. 
Because that's why we're on fire right now. That's because right. we just we just had it. It's a morning taping. I am so full of vitamins. It's the easiest way to make sure you're getting all your daily vitamins. It's also great for uh, keeping that gut nice and healthy and regular. We're mm. not taking any breaks here, and this is a long show. Yeah, I'm gonna hit the bathroom right after this. AG1 is just one scoop of powder in water, and it's a very easy habit to stick to. AG1 has all your key health products like multivitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more working together as one. It's made with 75 super high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients that deliver benefits like mood, immune system, and sleep support, sustained energy, and so much more. No more need to fill an entire cabinet with different supplements to keep track of. AG1 replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and more in one simple drinkable habit. It's a foundational nutrition supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. AG1 is daily nutrition made really simple. With just one scoop, I get the nutrients and gut health support that helps my whole body thrive and covers my nutritional bases. AG1 has quickly become just as important as that first cup of coffee for me. Don't talk to me till I've had my AG1. So if you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash weird. That is drinkag1.com slash weird. Check it out. This episode is also sponsored by Bespoke Post. Of all the packages that get dropped at my door, hands down, the best box I open every month is my box of awesome from Bespoke Post. What's that one from the IRS? No thanks. I want get the Bespoke Post. Get that out of here. Uh, my, my box of awesome is filled with carefully chosen gear from the best small brands around the world. No matter what you have going on this summer, Box of Awesome has you covered. From camping gear essentials, cookout must-haves, and drink game upgrades, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. Let's see what we got this month. Mm -hmm. We got the throwing knives with a little holster, a bunch of hot sauces from around the country, mm -hmm. a new barbecue rub to check out. Mm -hmm. My most recent one came with the best sleep mask I've ever seen. I got and a, some melatonin gummies. Hey, there you go. Yeah. I got a really nice uh, uh, Japanese food set. It was uh, very fancy mm. and something that I wouldn't have bought for myself, but it was a nice gift. A gift for yourself. That's right. It's like a surprise party whenever it shows up on your doorstep. No matter what you have going on this summer, Box of Awesome has you covered. From camping gear essentials, cookout must-haves, and drink game upgrades, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. And they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. Each box is valued at around $70, but you only pay a fraction of that price. Plus, with each Box of Awesome, you are supporting small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your Box of Awesome is from a small, up-and-coming brand. It's free to sign up. You can skip a month or cancel any time. And get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code WEIRD at checkout. That is boxofawesome.com, code WEIRD, for 20% off your first box. boxofawesome.com, code WEIRD. Links are also in the description. And let's start the headlines off with some wild shit that is... Reminiscent of the uh, pandemic days, some uh, perform for some public performance art of racism. Yeah, it's either like three years too late, or objectively two months too late, but, or uh, uh, seventy-five years too late, yeah. or a hundred and fifty years too late, or just shouldn't have ever happened. Confused Karen protests Target's Pride merch by wearing blackface, and yes, Pride Month was June. It is. August. It's uh -huh. August. Says so on my fake watch. That and, doesn't exist. And uh, yeah, putting on blackface to protest pride. Uh, strange. Getting... I'm going to use blackface to prove a really important point, which is... I, I don't know. I don't, we don't, I don't know. We well, didn't get to see it because she showed up demanding to see the pride merch. And they were like, was, sorry. It's not pride month. We don't have that here. And then I guess she... She later... Man, the Halloween decorations are just coming out if you'd like to see those. She went to Starbucks later on, like, filming herself, and she's, like, ranting about how she got fired from the post office or something. I don't know. This lady was She all gone postal? Like... I mean... This is the new gone postal? I guess postal? I'll take this over the alternative. Yeah. But, um, yeah, of and of course, she's, like, immediately fucking identified by people on the internet. How could they say it was me? It was... I had a costume on. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure that could be anyone. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, and, and the way these people get identified, so I, I feel like in this case it was almost certainly someone who this woman has previously worked with who saw her and was like, yep, that's exactly something she would do. Mm -hmm. I know that woman. This is what I dealt with on a daily basis back at the post office. And, um, yeah, it's just wild. 
Yeah, uh, they're it, they're it, running out of juice. They're running out of gas down there at the uh, right wing, like content factory. I think. Yeah, their outrage is spilling over into new and uh, fascinating ways of demonstration because the wires are all crossed here. There's yeah, yeah. nothing. I really want to know about... what the goal was, or if there was even a goal. Um, I, people have theorized, and I think this probably could be it that she would show up in blackface and go to the pride section and wait for someone to be like, why are you wearing blackface? And she'd be like, well, why are men wearing women face? Makes you think. I'm wearing blackface to prove, and a very important point here. Oh, I have this on to prove how smart I am. Yeah. It's all you who are looking real silly right now. Yeah. Not me. Mm-hmm. I actually look pretty cool. Took me a long time to pick out this shade of shoe polish. Yeah, it's really... A lot of thought went into this. Really something uh, that happened in this country and probably happens a lot more that we don't see. Luckily, all these people are filming themselves now yeah. and telling on themselves. <laughs> Half the footage we get now is just their own footage that they willingly put up on the internet. It's pretty cool. This is the smartest thing I've ever done. And, like, you know, in a year, that's all X videos, not to be confused with X videos, yeah. will be. It'll just be the it'll be the new uh, self-incrimination video site. Yep. And if Elon takes those videos down, he's restricting their free speech. That's right. But let's move on to another headline. Mr. Beast sues company making Mr. Beast Burger for serving inedible meals. <laughs> I'm honestly shocked it took this long. Yeah. Um, so it was like a ghost kitchen thing he set up. There, there is you see it on like all the apps. It's not a real restaurant. He partnered with some ghost kitchen, ghost kitchen licensing company. So basically, they the, were being made at at uh, at depending on where you lived, it was a different place. Yeah. So some here, of them were like Seven Eleven. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, the one here was I. I remember people saying that it was Buca de Beppa. Yeah. Uh, which like fine that it, you know, it's a somewhat normal restaurant I guess. Uh, but, uh, yes, yeah, some would get, like, shot out to, like, Red Robin, which is a fast food place. Some well, Red I... Robin's a sit-down restaurant. Oh, it is? Yeah. I saw I didn't grow up on the, uh, West Coast. Yeah, no, I, it used to be, like, my favorite spot. We'd go there for all my birthdays. Uh, I just shit-talked your favorite spot. I mean, I haven't been there in, like, 25 years, but I, I quite enjoyed it as a child. Well, keep that memory. If you go back now, it might be ruined. Uh, I'm but sure yes, the, the, it would be. <laughs> the quality obviously varied because it was coming from a different place depending on where you were. Yeah. And if you if you only lived in an area that presumably had a 7-Eleven or something like and that. And some of them some of them had Mr. Beast branded like packaging, but some of them didn't. So you'd like order Mr. Beast burger and you get just the most generic shitty burger. Uh, I uh, I ordered this so that I could get a cool picture of yeah. Mr. Donaldson on top of my burger. Yeah. Um yeah, I think, it, I think it was Curtis Connor maybe did a video like months ago of just like reviewing Mr. Beast Burger and like pointing out like just the complete inconsistency yeah. in everything about it. But yeah, this lawsuit is wild. There's pictures in there of like someone ordering a Mr. Beast like fried chicken sandwich and like cutting it in half and the chicken is like literally raw in the middle. And there's another one where like they, well, op that's the, they open uh, up the burger and there's just like fucking raw beef in it. That's what's, you, that's what's weird about doing this. I mean... It, theoretically, you'd be hard to get away with because all this guy, this guy's like super fucking famous, and yeah. all of his fans will immediately well, tell on you. Yeah, why would you? It's first of all, it's obvious that if you are getting a burger from two different places, they're going to be different. Right, but, but that's also not how like there's if you're no a child, there's you don't no that. oversight. Yeah, uh, with this, so it he's relying entirely on Ghost Kitchens to put out a product that is that meets his standards and his in, original intention, as I remember it. Was to which didn't make any sense. Well, it was to it was like restaurants need like business during the pandemic. It's like, I mean, restaurants doing takeout are already this is like the best they've ever done. Yeah. What are you talking about, Mister? But that Robinson? was the original intention, and so yeah. It, they also apparently didn't pay him any of like he he hasn't made any money. On well, yeah, that's but probably the thing he's most mad. The, about. Uh, he's probably realizing that uh, oh, nobody told me this. Restaurants operate on razor thin margins. Yeah. Oh. Oh, jeez. I'm finding out new things every day. Well, right. Mr. Beast is slowly learning. Yeah. Next, he, he, those candy bars. Every time I go to a 7-Eleven, I see his face at the checkout. I haven't had one yet, but... Uh, I don't think anyone's buying that shit. I don't know. I, uh, it is always fully stocked and looks like it hasn't been touched. Well, that's I, because his minions are going there no, and fronting they it. did that for a week. They, I, I don't believe that they are going to every fucking 7-Eleven in Los Angeles and... Uh, perfectly arranging his shit and they put it literally like right next to the cash register which indicates to me we need to move this shit it's move been it's been here for a while 
Yeah. So, uh... <clears throat> anyways, let's move on to Florida. Yeah. AP psychology effectively banned in Florida over sexuality lessons, College Board says. So, yeah, Florida Florida high school students, uh, I know you were looking for a little leg up in college, going to knock down some of those credits, but uh, no, you can't. Sorry. Because we looked into it. Turns out, psychology involves a lot of... Uh, a lot of groomer stuff, like how people are gay and it's okay and it's just something that happens and how people are trans and that's just like something that's been documented uh, in psychology for a century and... Um, well, I was... I was, I, I was, don't know. It's just not going to play here. Sorry. I was really red-assed reading this book about Arthur the Aardvark but then I put it down. I picked up the Sigmund Freud book and oh my stars! Yeah. It's very Freudian what he's getting up to in there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, paging Dr. Freud. <laughs> Have you seen this book? <laughs> Can we ban this? Oh, it's AP. Uh, let's just ban the whole course. Yeah. I love this. Um, we, you know, we're making our kids dumber on purpose and then, to stop the woke mind virus. In theory, like uh, <laughs> taking away the path to a career that is going to be desperately needed even more going forward. Yeah, no, like, if I if I was president, one of my first... Uh, <laughs> Mental health crisis. Yeah, no, I, I would literally just, like, allocate, like, half the military budget to creating an army of mental health professionals yeah. to fix whatever the fuck is going on in this country. Yeah. But, um... Instead, they're like, no, take it away. Yeah. That's we, pussy We need shit. fewer psychologists. Yeah. And more, uh... Need more um... bikeologists to get me that Harley. <laughs> oh, it's backwards. Why do I have it in reverse? Do Whoa, bike... that Harley's got four wheels. I, I've never. Do motorcycles have a reverse uh, drive? No, you just back it up with your <laughs> feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. No, it seems just... dangerous. But uh... <laughs> whoa, wrong gear. <laughs> oh, if you read this, I fell off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in more Florida news, here's something very exciting. There's a leprosy outbreak in Florida. And it's almost like they spent the past uh, three and a half years telling people that uh, vaccines uh, are not not just don't work, are bad for you. I mean, there is and no that communicable diseases are not a thing. And there's that, no vaccine for leprosy. Yeah. Because, first of all, there probably could be, if, but you know, it's a disease that was solved mm -hmm. so long ago. There is medicine that, like, as soon as you test positive for it, they give it to you, and you're pretty much good to go. No, doctors are liars. Why Similar would go to, to like tuberculosis. But, uh, yeah, it's really cool. Like, diseases that you've mostly heard of in the Bible, <laughs> uh, they're back in Florida, baby. Yeah. Because we're, we're turning back the clock. Leprosy. And, thankfully, Florida's got all those little tiny islands, so leper colonies. We're the bringing keys. back leper colonies. Yeah. The Keys are now a leper, leper colony. Great. Yeah, I Good mean, stuff. lepers, uh, you know, say what you will about having leprosy, but they got some of the, the sweetest spots back in the day. The island of Molokai in Hawaii mm -hmm. used to be lepers only. Mm-hmm. Finally, they opened up to the rest of us, but but they had a great time. Yeah, suffering from leprosy in the beautiful Malachi. sun, in, beautiful in the, Malachi, in the beautiful yeah. Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna have leprosy, what a way to yeah live out your day. It's not so bad. My fingers keep falling off. But, and they uh, said I could bring one mixtape, and they asked me what I should put on it through a BuzzFeed list. That's right. If you're going to a desert island for the rest of your life with leprosy, with leprosy, my leprosy desert island. What's the tape? one thing that you would bring? A cure for leprosy. No. Nope. Nope. Gotta, gotta be a mixtape. Well, you know, it's always exciting to see specifically a state like Florida, which uh, says, uh-uh, to any kind of medical science or yeah. theory, uh, just being inundated with leprosy. Yeah, the, the one tuberculosis lady we had up in Oregon, there's going to be like 50 leprosy people in Florida. Yeah. And, you know, the how... They don't know how these people got leprosy, but they know for a fact that, like, at least one of these patients got it domestically. Because, like, a good Florida man, he has not left the state in, like, decades. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, they think he just, like, got it from, like, being outdoors. So it's just there. They don't know how. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, cool. in general, spending, especially the last three and a half years or so, just completely uh, making your citizens... Uh, not only fear and distrust the medical community, but also hate them, yeah. is going to do wonderful things for previously eradicated problems. Hell yeah. We're doing it. 
And and pretty soon the whole country is going to be Florida. Once Ron DeSantis, no, he's got no fucking chance. And speaking of which, yeah, dismal turnout for Ron DeSantis one dollar beer campaign event. This man, man couldn't even sell one dollar <laughs> beers. Oh, so they they changed it to one dollar beers a week before the event because before that it was like it was a fifty dollar a ticket event where it was like have a beer with Ron DeSantis, and uh, no one signed up. Yeah. Or like a couple people signed up. They they finally they switched it to one dollar. And uh, 30 people showed up. Wow. And that's where we get that clip we talked about earlier, which we'll play now. Have a beer with, as always. Yeah. Well, we're, uh, I'm here. I don't know the other one. I'm not Okay, all right, all right. It's good, it's good. All right, we'll say hi to everybody. Wow, you love to see it. All right, let's go talk to people. Uh, all right, I'm sorry. I fucking hate people. I, I fucking I hate human beings. How many more of these people do I have to talk to? Uh, yeah, no, he very is so funny. so unpleasant. This, uh, a, 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 a dollar beer night at a bowling alley would turn <laughs> out more people than this Ron DeSantis event. Yeah, no, it's literally free beer. Yeah. Just to, all you have to do is endure being in the same room as Ron DeSantis. Yeah, a man who, whose riz levels are so low that he actually steals it from you if you walk by. He's the Shang Tsung of riz. Yeah. <laughs> Your riz is mine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, very funny, and, uh, couldn't have happened to a, uh, a better guy. Yeah, and speaking of Ron, Ron DeSantis vows to start slitting throats on first day of presidency. What? <laughs> uh, so, okay. Obviously he's not serious. He's serious? being metaphorical. He says, he's talking about... My metaphors are great and everyone understands them. He's talking about the deep state. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, yeah, you know, there's still a lot of deep state people in there. So day one in office, we've got to start slitting throats. <laughs> so I think he started, I think he's talking about firing people. But um, anyway, it's just, it's mostly funny because like literally if any, like imagine Hillary Clinton yeah. talking in 2016 about like, you know, we there's certain people in this government who don't have the country's best interests at heart, and so my first day in office, I'm slitting some throats. People would lose their fucking minds because yeah, that's just not language you're supposed to use while running for office. Yeah. But uh, we've become just so desensitized to it. It's like, oh, Ron DeSantis is going to be slitting some throats. Pretty yeah. wild. Anyway, I can't wait to get to Washington and put my skills developed at Guantanamo Bay to use. Yeah, and I guess I guess it also would be more shocking if this man had any fucking chance of being president. But now that it's abundantly clear he has no shot mm-hmm. and his he's p- kind of using up all the political capital he even has for any nas- nationwide office uh it's like okay well you're not going to get to slit any throats so yeah cool yeah he uh worry about your own state sir I, I, yeah, I, it there's is a hurry, lot going on there hurricane season is starting there's <laughs> leprosy yeah you have leprosy yes uh bigger things to worry about uh if you <laughs> If you thought that Ron DeSantis is in a really bad position right now politically, just wait because he's still running for president. And while he's running for president, a major hurricane is going to hit the state. Oh, those are happening this year, too? <laughs> they Actually, they're taking a break this year because Ron DeSantis is running for president. Oh, are those, wait, are hurricanes annual? They're controlled by Republicans. And uh, uh, so that's why they only hit the big, the big blue cities. Well, I'm excited for Joe Biden to head down to Florida again. And uh, riz up the the local citizens. Mm-hmm. Well, Ron DeSantis walks by like Charlie Brown, mm-hmm. looking sad. He is not the drip king. Not the drip king. No. Florida woman arrested after biting ear off another woman during fight over vape pens and alcohol. I mean, that is the most Florida headline we've seen in a while, outside yeah. of all the other horrific stuff. This is classic. Florida man, it's Florida woman, happens Florida every person. day. Yeah, every day down there, they're biting each other's ears off because yeah. of uh, vape-related uh, uh, like conflicts with each other. Yeah. Um, so this is just your standard Florida stuff. Yeah. This just happens every day. This is just one of them happened. That's to how be we say hi down here. <laughs> big enough to make the headlines. That's all. A reporter just happened to be walking by an average day and said, "Huh, I should probably document this." Down here, we do things a little bit differently. By differently, we mean weird as fuck. Did you see the uh, Mike Flynn tweet this week? No. The uh, be sure to take uh, the the child grooming course over at Sarasota County Schools or whatever. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sir, <Wait. laughs> you uh, you wrote that all wrong and weird. Uh, 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 what? But I told you he's up to fucking weird shit down there. Well, he you know it's the perfect place for him. Yeah. He probably killed. He probably fucked that manatee to death. It was him the whole time. Yeah, they're pinning it on the manatee's brother, but you know. They loved each other. They, he had to change his name. Previously, it was Mike Finn, but it, that was yeah. a little too on the nose. He's actually a fish fucker. 
Anyway, that's enough Florida. Uh, the people paid to train AI are outsourcing their work to AI. Yes. Yes. We love it. Because we know for a fact at this point that that makes the AI lose its mind and be bad. Mm -hmm. And all the people, the AIs are trained by, well, previously they were trained by like going to just the poorest places in the world and paying people like 10 cents an hour mm -hmm. to do manual work. And uh, yeah, MIT did a study where they, they set up an AI training scenario like any of those and uh, set up some sort of like keylogger uh, thing to like see how much of the work that people were actually doing and how much was just control C, control V. Mm -hmm. And it was like, yeah, like easily 50% of the people we hired to build an AI language model were literally just using ChatGPT to do the work that we needed. Great. So. Thank you for uh, your service. Yeah, large language model collapse. It's coming, folks. Now, all the we even the uh, now that they've all got their like second earnings reports out, all the companies are like, by the way, let's temper our expectations on all yeah. this AI. Yeah, turns stuff. out this was kind of just a parlor trick. Yeah. Oh fuck. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. Oops. Animal news: Montana otter attack leaves three women hurt, including one flown to the hospital. That's because it's not just the oceans. It's what feeds the oceans. Yeah, like, oh, I'll just stay away from the oceans. I want to avoid the animal apocalypse. No, you fucking idiot. There's rivers everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, not here in L.A. We destroyed We have a, a big, beautiful river here in mm, L.A. It's not really a river. It's a, it's a storm drain. The world's biggest storm drain. It's beautiful, But um, I didn't even know that, I mean, this is my city boy talking, but I didn't know there were river otters. Mm. I, knew, I knew about sea otters. We get them on the coast here in California. Did not know about river otters. You never seen like a nature documentary or anything like that? Never. What's a nature documentary? Uh, Walt Disney used to make them. Oh. He would force animals to act. Yeah, that's how those lemmings all killed themselves. Yeah, and now they have that stigma attached to them. Um, but yeah, they're these. I guess they're just t having a nice tubing day out on the, the river. Mm -hmm. Lovely summer tubing. And an otter... Which is like the size of like a small dog. Yeah. Just like charged at him, was slashing him up. Yeah, what the fuck are you doing on my river? Yeah. So. And one of them had to be airlifted. It was that bad. Uh, Don't go in the fucking water. Stay away it's from the water. It's not yours. It's not your water. Stay away. And final headline, man thrusts American flag through another man's head at Sonic, Oklahoma cops say. Wow. And he lived somehow. Which is good because it's because he got, got one of those uh, icy freezes or whatever. Those, I guess uh, yeah, brain freeze. Uh, yeah, for, at the Sonic, it's cryogenically froze his brain. So yep. that Hurry, drink this. Yeah, the article doesn't say what the uh, what what caused things to escalate to this level, but uh, yeah, a man picked up a flagpole and jammed it through another man's head, like up through the jaw, and then like out that's like the nuts. side of the cranium. So like it mostly missed the brain, but well, that's like, good. Yeah. Still, wouldn't want it to happen to me. Strange things happening down at the Sonic in Oklahoma. Sonic, never been to one. Really? There's they, a lot you haven't done. They, they're always on the damn TV. We don't have Sonics here, do we? You have to go out east. No, I'm not going east. Mr. Red Robin over here has never had a Sonic? Nope. They still, uh, it's like a, they, they come out to your car, I believe, still. They're wearing roller skates? I think it's been a long time since I've been to a Sonic. But, mm, roller uh, skates. Yeah. So Pretty there you cool. go. I, I'm sure someone in the comments will let us all know about these regional restaurants. I think there, there, I think there is like one Sonic in like a weird place. It's like somewhere Riverside out in the county IE, yeah. or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't but, call it the Inland Empire for nothing. It's, listen, it's when I said I don't go east, I said I, I do not go east. <laughs> we're not, whether we're talking about Florida or we're talking about Riverside County, which is <laughs> one hour away, I do not go east. Nothing good happens that direction. Nope. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, don't forget to like the video. Do it right now. Hit the like button. Do it. Leave a comment. Reply to a comment. Subscribe to the like. channel. Give me your likes. Those are my likes. Give me those I likes. I want your likes. Give me your likes. Give me them. Those are my likes. We'll be back at some point next week. Uh, have a great weekend. Uh, if you haven't seen them already, we have some new videos up here for you. We got Trump's indictment number three. Oh, baby, a triple. Oh, baby, a triple. And, ooh wee. And then some ongoing uh, Elon Musk news I'm sure you're aware of. But mm -hmm. watch both of those videos if you haven't seen them. And we'll be back soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.